love you, Lord. Amen. Amen, amen, all right. We're here, we're on. Uh, we're gonna get going. Sorry for being late. Uh, soul stirring songs and hymns. Uh, we're gonna begin, as always, with a song, praising the Lord Jesus. Then we're gonna have a, a reading from uh, the gospel according to St. Mark chapter six. And then I'm gonna get into a little preaching about rejection today. And then we're going to close in prayer and all, as always, give God the last word. Anyways, here we go. Uh, oh, we're going to sing. Sorry, we're going to sing uh, um, in the Soul Stirring Songs and Hymn Book, number three, se 374. Number 374, Send the Light. Send the Light. Here we go. There's a call come ringing o'er the restless wave. Send the light, send the light. There are souls to rescue, there are souls to save. Send the light, send the light, send the light. The blessed gospel light, let it shine from shore to shore. Send the light, the blessed gospel light, let it shine forevermore. We have heard the Macedonian call today. Send the light, send the light. And a golden offering at the cross we lay. Send the light, send the light, send the light. The blessed gospel light, let it shine from shore to shore. Send the light, the blessed gospel light, let it shine forevermore. Let us pray that grace may everywhere abound. Send the light, send the light, and a Christ-like spirit everywhere be found. Send the light, send the light, send the light, the blessed gospel light. Let it shine from shore to shore. Send the light, the blessed gospel light let it shine forevermore let us not grow weary in the work of love send the light send the light let us gather jewels for a crown above send the light send the light send the light the blessed gospel light let it shine from shore to shore send the light the blessed gospel light let it shine forever more. Amen. Amen. We ask the uh, Lord that you send your light to us today and to all of you who are watching this video. In Jesus' name I pray. <clears throat> um, today our opening reading is going to be from the gospel according to St. Mark chapter number 6. Chapter number 6, verses 1 through 6, the Bible says, And he went out from thence and came into his own country, and his disciples follow him. And when the Sabbath day was come, he began to teach in the synagogue. And many, hearing him, were astonished, saying, From whence hath this man these things? And what wisdom is this which is given unto him? that even such as mighty works are wrought by his hands. Is not this the carpenter's son of Mary, the brother of James, and uh, Joseph, and of Judah, and Simon? And are not his sisters here with us? And they were offended at him. But Jesus said unto them, A prophet is not without honor, but in his own country, and among his own kin, and in his own home. And he could there do no more mighty works, save that he laid his hands upon a few sick folk and healed them. And he marveled, 
because of their unbelief, and he went round about the villages teaching. The word of the Lord. <clears throat> Greetings, friends and colleagues. It's good to see you again today. Um, I have another message today about rejection. In this opening passage we read, the Bible says that they were offended at Jesus' preaching. Not because he preached something bad, but because they knew him. They grew up with him. They knew his friends. They knew his family. So they didn't want to, they had a hard time believing what he said. They had a hard time accepting him. So they rejected him. This is a teaching um, from Jesus where he says, uh, if you look at verse number four, Jesus says, A prophet is not without honor, but in his own country and among his own kin and in his own house. I wanted to talk today about rejection, but specifically I wanted to talk about rejection from your own neighbors, from your own countrymen, your own family, your own church members, your own family, your own friends. Last time uh, I talked about why the world hates us, but today, um, you know, they hate, they hate us because why the world hates us. The world hates us because it hates Jesus, right? But today specifically, I want to talk about why our own friends, why our own family members, why people, people who are close to us reject us. Because, you know, maybe hate is too strong of a word, but I'll, I'll say, you know, they won't accept us. You know, maybe they don't hate us, but they, they don't exactly accept us, right? They, they cast us away. They ignore us. They, um, they don't, uh, they're not the most friendliest people, right? I've been rejected before, you know, I've, uh, I've been rejected for jobs that I've applied for. Now, they aren't supposed to, in the, in, in the United States, reject you for work or employment based on race, color, or creed. Um, that's called discrimination. Um, I've been rejected by women before. You know, you don't make enough money, Sean. You don't, uh, you don't have enough status. You, <laughs> you uh, are not good looking enough, okay? You know, rejection hurts. Because uh, it's one thing to be rejected for something, you know, because you're actually not qualified, right? Or you're unfit for duty or service. But it's a completely other thing to be rejected when you didn't do anything wrong. When you're actually doing everything right, everything you're supposed to be, but you're just being discriminated against, right? They don't like you for, um, for things that uh, don't have anything application to um, what you're applying for or whatever, you know? I want you to look back in Matthew chapter 6, or excuse me, Mark chapter 6. Look back at verse 1. I don't know if you're there. If you have a King James Bible, I preach out of the King James. But anyway, Mark chapter 6 says, And he went out from thence and came into his own country, and his disciples followed him. So Jesus went back to his own country, where he grew up, where his family was, where people knew him, right? Sometimes in our lives... The people closest to us, they're the ones who are going to reject us. That's what Jesus is saying here. Look, where, where, where you think where home should be, right? The people of your own, <laughs> your own hometown, the people who know you, the people who grew up with you, the people who, who see you every day, whatever, right? These are the people you think would accept you, but these are actually the people who are going to reject you, right? Some people are like that, you know, because I think, you know, sometimes... We need to be careful that we don't become like this, right? A lot of the times we try to fit people into a box and, and we and we say, well, if you, you know, if you don't think the same way I think or or um, you don't do exactly the same things that I would want you to do, you know, it's easier to just toss that box out, toss that person aside and reject them. You know, and it's easier to reject somebody who you know, right, who you 
who you know, hey, this person I know doesn't fit into my box, right? They, they do not meet my expectations because I know them. It's easier to accept somebody who you don't know yet. You've never met them. You haven't developed any expectations. You haven't put them in any box yet, right? So it's easier to listen to what they have to say with an unbiased view. And a, a lot of this has to do with not judging a book by its cover. You know, some people reject the Bible um, not because they've read it and said, I don't like that book. Um, but because, you know, of what other people who do read the Bible, who preach the Bible, who claim to believe the Bible, because of how they act, how they treat them, they'll say, you know what, I don't want anything to do with that Bible. When the Bible, the Bible didn't do anything wrong to them, right? The Bible doesn't say anything bad, right? It says everything good. It gives them the good news of Jesus' salvation. But um, because of what other people did that's bad to them who do read this book and talk about this book, so, you know, let that be a lesson to us. You know, friends, I think it's important to remember that um, we, as Christians, we represent the Bible, okay? So, I, and I've heard it said before that that us, as Christians, we may very well be the only Bible that some people ever read, right? Because they'll look at us, and, and they'll see how we treat other people, and we treat them. And they'll say, okay, so that's what reading the Bible does to you? That's what the Christian life uh, turns out to be, I don't want nothing to do with that. I don't like that. You know, and I and I know that it's it's kind of unfair to us Christians, you know, to judge the Bible based on us, because we're saying, well, that's unfair to the Bible. But you know, that's what people do. Sometimes people re will reject you um, if you're a certain denomination. You know. Oh, well, I'm a Baptist. Oh, well, I'm a Southern Baptist, so I don't want anything to do with you, right? Look, could you imagine if God rejected us like that for just petty reasons? Turn to Matthew chapter 7. Matthew chapter 7. I want to, I want to look at uh, some words Jesus says, some wise words Jesus says in Matthew 7. And we're just going to read uh, the first five verses. Uh, Matthew 7, Jesus says, this is Jesus speaking. He says, judge not, that ye be not judged. For with what judgment ye judge, ye shall be judged. And with what measure ye meet, it shall be measured to you again. And why beholdest thou the mote that is in thy brother's eye? But considerest not the beam that is in thy own eye. Or how wilt thou say to thy brother, let me pull out the mote out of thine eye and behold a beam? Is in thine own eye, thou hypocrite, first cast out the beam out of thine own eye, and then shalt thou see clearly to cast out the mote out of thy brother's eye. Judge, excuse me, judge not that ye be not judged. That's what Jesus says. The Bible doesn't tell us not to judge, right? A lot of people make that mistake. But Jesus says you need to judge fairly. Okay, if you're going to judge somebody by this standard, you need to hold that same standard to yourself and not be upset once other people hold you to that standard. You know, we need to treat people uh, the way we would want to tre be treated, basically the golden rule. Right. So what goes around comes around type of thing. Right. Um, now, back to our opening reading, uh, when 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 people of Jesus's own hometown rejected him, uh, I think. There, there, and Jesus said, there was hardly any miracles I could do, right? Because the people limited me by not believing in me, right? I think he could have performed so many more miracles if the people would have accepted him, but they didn't. And I, and I wanted to point out here that, you know, a lot of the times we miss a lot of great opportunities in our life. So many good things could come from our life. If we just didn't reject people for the wrong reasons, right? We turn them away. And, and we miss out on, on great blessings, great opportunities in our life of things that, um, miracles that could happen, blessings from God. Now, now, don't get me wrong. There are a certain times when we do need to reject people, when we knew, do need to push them away and say, hey, you're toxic. Stay away from me. But... But see, that word toxic nowadays is, is it, I think it's just overplayed. It's outplayed. 
everything is toxic now. Like, toxic masculinity. All masculinity is now toxic somehow. Um, uh, submitting to your husband, right? Which, which is a, a commandment in the Bible, is toxic, right? They say, oh, well, I, a woman should not submit to her husband. That's toxic. We need to be strong. We need to be independent. We can do it on our own. We don't need a husband, right? We we can do it on our own. Anything anything that's outside of our comfort zone now is toxic, right? Apparently. I guess the closest thing that I can think of that the Bible talks about being toxic is uh, what's called an abomination. The Lord calls it an abomination. And I want to look at a few things that uh, God calls toxic, or he, he uses the word abomination, so... Uh, turn to the Old Testament in Proverbs, chapter uh, chapter six. We're going to look at Proverbs chapter six, and starting in verse sixteen, the Bible says, "These six things doth the Lord hate; yea, seven are an abomination unto Him." So these are the seven toxic things the Lord hates. Verse seventeen, number one. Uh, Proverbs 6, uh, verse 17 says, A proud look, a lying tongue, and hands that shed innocent blood. A heart that deviseth wicked imaginations. Feet that be swift in running to mischief. A false witness that speaketh lies, and he that soweth discord amongst the brethren. God says these things are toxic. They're an abomination. A proud look, thinking that you're better than somebody else, thinking that you're too good for them. I'm too good for you. Why? Because of how you look, because of who, what friends you, uh, because of what hometown you come from, because of what job you have. God hates that. And this could go the other way too, right? You may be thinking that, oh, I'm not good enough for so-and-so. They're better than me. God says, I hate that. A lying tongue. God hates liars. And let me tell you this, concealing the truth is just as bad as lying, as, as saying something that's not true, right? When you know you should tell somebody something, but you conceal that information from them, you don't, you don't show them something that... Uh, that you know that they should see, all right? God hates that too. Some people, some people will reject you based off a lie, right? Because they don't want you to see something in their lives that's going on. So they'll say, get away from me, right? If you get too close to them, you know, you might find out their secret that they're hiding. They're lying to you. Hands that shed innocent blood. Jesus knows all about that, right? Jesus was innocent and, and, uh, the world killed him. Hands that shed innocent blood. They shed his innocent blood on the cross. Now you don't always have to kill somebody. Jesus said in 1 John chapter 3, verse 15, Whosoever hateth his brother is a murderer. And ye know that no murderer hath eternal life abiding in him. So if you hate somebody, in it, an innocent person, right? You, let's say you hate somebody who hasn't done any sin. You just hate, oh, I hate the way they look. You know, I hate that the way they do that, uh, whatever uh, pet peeve you have that they do. It's not a sin, but you just hate them for that. Jesus says you're no different than a murderer. If you don't like something about somebody, maybe something uh, they're doing something you don't like, and you don't say anything to them about it, you don't try to... Um, like, if they are doing something wrong and you don't tell them, hey, look, that's a sin what you're doing. You hate them for that. You reject them. That's the same thing as murder, according to Jesus. The Bible says that we need to be peacemakers in this world, right? Now, that doesn't mean that we should make peace with sin. You know, we should not have fellowship with... Uh, um, righteousness should not have fellowship with darkness. Lightness should no have no fellowship with darkness. I'm paraphrasing that verse. I'm sorry. But... We need to separate ourselves from sin, of course. That's not what I'm not that's not what I'm saying to have peace with sin. 
Now, if you reject somebody who's involved with sin, who's living a wicked lifestyle um, without first telling them, hey, did you know that you're you're a sinner? Did you know that what you're doing is wrong? Because, you know, a lot of times people don't know what they're doing is wrong. Okay? They're doing it, and, and you have to gently go tell them, hey, did you know that what you're doing is wrong? According to the Bible, you're in sin. Now, now I don't want to get too off point here, but I'm going to... I'm going to go off point for a second and say, you know, when somebody rejects you and they don't give you a reason why, they just ignore you, right? They, they, they put on a smile and try to act like everything's okay, but you know everything's not okay based on how they're treating you. Or, or maybe they just lie to you straight up. Is everything okay? Oh, yeah, everything's fine. <laughs> I mean, fellas, how many times... Uh, have you have you asked your girlfriend or your wife, honey, is everything okay? <laughs> yeah, everything's fine. You know, you know everything's not fine, right? Or, or my for my single guys, how many time times have you went and asked a girl out for a date, and she says no, and she rejects you, right? And and you and and you're like, really? Why not? And she's just like, well, uh, you're a great guy, but. Um, I just, uh, we're not compatible. It's like, really? I'm a guy, you're a guy, or you're a guy. I'm a guy, you're a girl, we're compatible, (laughs) right? I'm not trying to do anything sinful. Anyways, back to my point here. My, My point is, let's go back to, to the original, um, thing that I was talking about in the, in the beginning, remember Jesus' own hometown rejected him, right? Jesus' own hometown rejected him. They didn't tell him why they rejected him. Because honestly, they didn't have a good reason. So if they were to go up to Jesus and say, Listen, Jesus, we're rejecting you because uh, we don't like you. Well, that makes them look bad because now they're the sinner, right? So we need to make sure that we don't reject people uh, based on appearances. That's what I'm getting at. You know, like, if you have an issue with somebody, you need to go talk to them about it, okay? Okay. Um, if they're involved with sin, you still need to go talk to them about it and say, hey, look, make an attempt to try to uh, get them to uh, repent and change their mind and stop doing that sin, right? Because if they refuse, well, now you you have a good reason to say, hey, we reject you. We don't want anything to do with you. We don't want to talk to you anymore. That's fine because of This sin that you're involved with. Now, if you get that sin right, you fix it, you repent. We're glad to welcome you back with open arms. But if you're in sin, you reject people, you don't try to reconcile with them, right? You're the problem. We need to be peacemakers in this world. And sometimes that involves talking to people, communicating with people. As Christians, um, we need to forgive people right we need to forgive one another because let's face it we're all going to make mistakes we're all sinners we are we're all gonna um do something wrong to somebody at some point in our lives right because we all make mistakes we're all sinners so when somebody does you wrong and they change they apologize to you they're sorry they get it right you need to make just as much effort at restoring that broken relationship as they did at apologizing and changing their behavior, right? Don't get this attitude that, well, they rejected me so they can fix it. It's their problem. No, friends. That's not how God operates, right? That's not how God treats us, right? Remember, in the Old Testament, Israel rejected God. They didn't, they didn't want anything to do with God. They started following um, false gods and false idols and 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 you know what God said he said you know what I'm gonna do my best to reconcile this relationship because I love you right I love you so much that I'm sending my own son Jesus to die for you that's how we need to think we need to have the mind of Christ we need to have the mind of God we need to be merciful and and gracious to people What's the difference between mercy and grace? Grace is getting something that you don't deserve. Mercy is not getting something that you do deserve. There's a time to reject sinners. Sure, of course. People who are willfully 
um, in sin, right? You, you've told them once, you've told them twice, and they just say, no, I'm going to continue living my sinful lifestyle. That's one thing, right? We need to, yeah, stay away from those people. But we need to have forgiveness for people who decided to get it right. Maybe, they, maybe they've made some mistakes in the past, and, and we need to embrace them and, and forgive them and welcome them back and say, hey, look, if you get it right, no problem. And you know, I'm, I'm not saying to lower your standards. Okay, that's not what I'm saying. Don't mistake me. Our standards, of course, is the Bible. You know, we have the commandments of God. We know what's right, what's wrong. We know what's holy. But friends, we all fall short of the glory of God. Right? We all fall short of what the Bible says is our standard to live by. So we need to love one another and, and have a forgiving heart. Accept people. Be friendly, be kind, you know, you're not going to get along with everybody. You're not going to believe exactly like everybody. So we need to be peacemakers. We need to say, uh, I forgive you. We need to, we didn't have a heart of love. You don't want to get to the point where you say, well, I don't want to be friends with you. Um, I don't like you, right? I don't like what you're doing over there. I don't like, I don't like the way you look. I don't like who you're friends with. But look, are you friends with somebody? Do you want to form relationships with people for your own glory or for God's glory? Right? All of our relationships should be focused on the glory of God, bringing God glory. You know, oh, you shouldn't have a group of friends where, oh, well, all these people think the same as me. That's why we're friends. You know, I think God gets so much glory. And you know, now is the time of Thanksgiving. And I and I think of back in the in the colonial days when the East met the West, right? The pilgrims came from from uh from England and Spain. They came over here to uh the United States, what's now the United States, and they mingled with the with the natives here. And I think for the glory of God, they came together. They came together and they and they unified with each other. I know there was a lot of fighting too, but we're not going to get into that whole story. But but my point is, is when people are different, okay? When people are different and they come together, God gets glory, you know? I mean, if all your friends are just people who think like you and act like you, I think something's wrong with you, you know? Because everybody in this world is different. God made us all different. We all have a different way of looking at things and a different viewpoint. Now, the Bible says we do need to be in one one accord. We need to all make our standard this Bible. But, you know, some people, they interpret the Bible a little different. They read it a little different. And and and, and it's not a sin, okay? It's not a sin to, uh, to interpret the Bible a little bit differently. Now, some people do twist it for their own benefit. Now, you have to be careful of that. But what I'm... What I'm my point is, is that God gets glory when different people of different cultures, of different ways of life, different ways of thinking get together for his glory, to glorify Jesus, his son. That's my point. You know, had had these people who rejected Jesus in his hometown said, you know what? Yeah, Jesus is a carpenter. Okay, we don't really like that. Yeah, he's from Nazareth. We don't really like that either. Yeah, he's a Jew. We don't really like that. But it's not a sin. So for the glory of God, we're going to accept him. We're going to accept him. We're going to treat him right. We're going to be kind to him. We're going to listen to what he has to say. A lot of great blessings would have came. A lot of miracles would have taken place. But they limited themselves. They limited God's miracles, God's blessings, because they rejected him for reasons that they had no, it was just petty stuff. He's a carpenter. We don't like him. We should only be rejecting people for blatant sins after we have tried to get them out of that sin and they refused. That's my point. And and that's my message for the day, guys, about rejection. Um, be careful how you reject people, who you reject. 
Because you could be limiting yourself to a lot of blessings. Be careful who you judge. Because it's really easy to get it wrong, you know, to judge for the wrong reasons, for our own glory, for our own selfishness. Oh, I only want a certain amount of friends. I only want my friends to be like this. But that's my message for the day, guys. You know, God bless you guys. God bless this message. Let's go out there. Let's go on, out in the world today and let's and let's try to be peacemakers in the world. Let's let's try not to reject people for petty reasons, especially wrong reasons. If they're not doing a sin, right? You need to love them. They look different than you. They talk different than you. Hey, love them. They do things a little different than you. Love them. Learn to love that. Learn to embrace uh, people diverse people and speak the truth in love you know for people who are in sin go out there and speak the truth in gentleness don't don't try to push them away and say hey shame on try to get them back to god try to reconcile them back that's what we're supposed to be doing that's our call as christians is to is to form relationships not for our own glory but for god's glory so that his name can be glorified that's my message for the day, guys. Um, I hope you learned something. I hope you got inspired. And um, but I'll see you guys on the on the next one. Um, anyway, in Jesus' name, like I said, we're gonna bow in prayer. And our and our closing reading is gonna be from the New Testament in the book of Romans, chapter fourteen. Romans chapter fourteen. Um, We'll give God the last word, but let's bow in prayer. God bless you guys. Thanks for listening. Oh, dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this message today um, of rejection, Lord. I'm, I'm sorry that Israel rejected you. I'm sorry so many people reject you, Lord. I, I know it must hurt you so bad um, to have your son be rejected, Lord. It must make you so upset and angry after all you've done for us, Lord. I'm sure you've been rejected more than... Everybody, all of us combined, Lord, you, <laughs> but Lord, you, you, we also accept you, Lord, so please remember us and those who do accept you and love you, and uh, we thank you for trying to make it right for us when, when we have done wrong, we, and when we have sinned, Lord, please forgive us for that. Um, we're often picky, Lord, on who we want in our friends groups, and Sometimes we get proud, we get arrogant, Lord, and please help humble us, Lord, and forgive us, Father, for being that way, but humble us through your word, through preaching, through reading your Bible, reading our Bible, your word, Lord. I ask that you unify us as Christians. A lot of Christian churches and denominations nowadays are are broken up and divided into different factions, and Lord, just help us who believe in you, uh, get along better, support each other and love each other and not judge each other um, unrighteously or un unfairly. Lord, I ask that you help us believers communicate better with each other. I think so many times people just have misunderstandings and, and you know they, they break away with each other, they divide with each other and sometimes it's all just on something that's not true. It's just a misunderstanding. Father, just please help us forgive each other and reconcile us back to one another who maybe we have been away from for a while and just unite, reunite us for your glory, Father. Um, I couldn't think of anything more glorifying to you, Lord, than if two Christians who had a conflict or something in the past and they resolved it and united for your glory, Lord. Anyway, you, you've accepted us. Father, as sinners, and we're thankful for that. We're thankful that you gave us your son, Jesus. We know that it wasn't easy, Lord, but you loved us and you wanted to re reconcile back to us. You accepted us. Father, help us to accept others as you've accepted us. We love you, Father. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you guys. Thanks for listening. Have a wonderful day in Jesus' name. All right, uh, our, our closing reading, we're going to give God the last word, is going to be in Romans chapter 14. Um, we're going to read about half the chapter through verse 13. God bless you guys. Have a great day. 
Romans 14. Him that is weak in the faith receive ye, but not to doubtful dis- disputations. For one believeth that he may eat all things, and other who is weak eateth herbs. Let not him that eateth despise him that eateth not, and let not him which eateth not judge him that eateth. For God hath received him. Who art thou that judgest another man's servant? To his own master he standeth or falleth. Yea, he, yea, he, he be, he shall be holden up, for God is able to make him stand. One man esteemeth one day above another; another esteemeth every day alike. Let every man be fully persuaded in his own mind. He that regardeth the day regardeth it unto the Lord, and he that regardeth not the day to the Lord he doth not regard. He that, uh, excuse me. He that eateth eateth to the Lord, for he that giveth God thanks. And he that eateth not to the Lord, he eateth not and giveth God thanks. For none of us liveth to himself, and no man dieth to himself. For whether we live, we live unto the Lord, and whether we die, we die unto the Lord. Whether we live, therefore, or die, we are the Lord's. For to this end Christ both died and rose and revived, that he might be Lord both of the dead and of the living. But why dost thou judge thy brother? And why dost thou set at naught thy brother? For we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. For it is written, As I live, saith the Lord, every knee shall bow, and every tongue shall confess to God. So then every one of us shall give account to himself to God. Let us not therefore judge one another any more. But judge this rather, that no man putteth a stumbling block or an occasion to fall in his brother's way. Amen.